The object of this bill is to amend the Administration of Parliament Act, CAP 272, to provide for the election of the Leader of the Opposition by members of the Opposition in Parliament, to provide for additional grounds upon which the Leader of the Opposition may cease to hold office, to require the Shadow Cabinet to be approved by members of the Opposition in Parliament, to require the Leader of the Opposition to consult opposition political parties represented in Parliament, when appointing chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of the relevant standing committees of parliament and for related matters. Let me talk about the challenges posed by the proposed bill from my standpoint. Election of the leader of the opposition by members of the opposition in parliament has significant implications for a democratic process. While the notion of voting for the LOP may seem, de may seem democratic in theory, it prevent, presents several challenges that could undermine the effectiveness, accountability, and stability of our parliamentary system. Historically, the election of the LOP by the largest party has been a cornerstone of parliamentary democracy, particularly in systems influenced by the Westminster model. This practice ensures that the opposition is credible and representative of a significant portion of the electorate. By shifting to a voting system in the House, Honorable Chair and Members, we risk disrupting this established tradition, which has served to maintain a clear and effective opposition that can hold the government accountable. Because even government should be interested in a credible opposition that holds it accountable. Parliament has got two sides, Honorable Chair and Members. The right side of the Speaker and the left side. The right side is led by the leader of government business, who is also the prime minister, while the left side is led by the leader of the opposition. The leader of government business is not elected by MPs on the government side. So why would we be seeking to have the leader on one side elected? Honorable Chair and Members, while the intention behind the proposal to have the Shadow Cabinet approved by all members of the opposition in Parliament may be presented as one that ensures inclusivity, it presents several critical challenges that could undermine the effectiveness, efficacy, accountability, and stability of our parliamentary system and operations. The Shadow Cabinet is a replica of the Government Cabinet, which is appointed by the person announced as winner of an election. The Shadow Cabinet is intended to hold accountable the substantive cabinet ministers. The intention is for the leader of the opposition to have a team that he or she would be comfortable working with, hence the reason for appointing shadow ministers, as opposed to making it a decision of all opposition MPs in parliament. If the government cabinet ministers are not determined by all MPs on the government side, I ask, why then is it necessary for the Shadow Cabinet to be determined by all opposition MPs? Honorable Chair and Members, the appointment of chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of accountability committees has been a prerogative of the opposition leadership in Parliament without requiring the endorsement of all opposition political parties that are represented in Parliament. This practice was established to ensure effectiveness in holding the government accountable. The same practice applies to chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of all other committees except accountability committees. Honorable Chair and colleague members of Parliament, for information purposes, Parliament has got a total of 28 standing and sectoral committees. However, only four of these 28 committees are led by the opposition. The rest, which is 24, are led by the ruling party. The ruling party selects the leaders of the committees under their mandate, that's the 24. Why then would the opposition be deprived of the same practice? What exactly would we be seeking to remedy? Honorable Chair, I saw a belated afterthought of the mover of this bill, saying even the chief opposition whip whom we call the cow on our end, should be subjected to a determination of all opposition MPs. 
Again, the opposition side has got the chief opposition whip, and the ruling party side has got the government chief whip, who is also appointed and is a member of cabinet. That's the government cabinet. I ask again, why would we be interested in subjecting one side to a process that the other side is not subjected to, honorable chair and members? Do we want to create a situation of more important and less important positions in this our parliamentary system that is critical and where all these roles are critical? Honorable chair and members, Election of the leaders on the opposition side of parliament by members would make the opposition prone to fragmentation. When opposition members in parliament are forced to compete for leadership positions, it can lead to divisions and weaken their collective ability to unite and hold the ruling government accountable. A fragmented opposition is less effective in presenting a united front, which is critical for influencing legislative outcomes and ensuring that diverse viewpoints are presented. Honorable Chair and Members, the mover of this bill says the bill is intended for the good of the opposition. But as I have been observing, all opposition political parties have disregarded this proposed amendment, saying it is not in any way relevant. So I ask, which opposition is the mover of the bill talking about? Honorable Chair and members of this committee, I'm not the first leader of opposition in this parliament, and I will not be the last. So if the mover is targeting the current lope, then he is with all due respect misguided, because I'm not in this office permanently. Tomorrow, it may not be me occupying this office, but it is important that we do not emasculate whoever the occupant of this office is. Honorable Chair, I saw colleagues from the NRM who appeared before this Honorable Committee yesterday, acknowledging that they too could be in the opposition someday. And that is the reality of politics, Honorable colleagues. So let's seek to strengthen as opposed to watering down these different political offices. Conclusively, Honorable Chair and Members, the current legal regime is devoid of any reasonable lacuna that would warrant an amendment. I thank you. Parliament prescribed that mode in the Administration of Parliament Act, saying the leader of the opposition shall be elected by the leading opposition party. That's in the law. So there is no lacuna. The Constitution says Parliament shall prescribe. Parliament actually prescribed. And I was elected by my party with specificity, if you want to know. I was elected by the National Executive Committee of my party. That's the top organ of the party. So I, I don't think there is a gap there in that it's confusing. Do you choose or otherwise? The law is very clear. The Administration of Parliament Act shall be elected by the leading opposition party. And that's what happened in my case. That's what happened with my predecessor, speaking for my party, how we do actualize that. I think those are the questions that came through. If I've missed out any, I can be guided, honorable chair and members.